Hello there, Writing Workshop, and welcome to day 37. If you haven't taken a look at today's journal entry yet, this one actually does require you to type incomplete sentences once again. I just want to get your a little bit of your philosophy on reading. So uh, art, music, and literature can enlighten us. They can teach us uh, on any number of themes. That's largely what we're focusing on in our literary analysis essay. However, we also look at artwork, we listen to music, we read poetry, we read stories for pleasure. Which is the more important function of literature? Is literature primarily um, for our education to teach us? Or is it primarily for our entertainment? No matter which way you choose to argue, just be sure to explain your reasoning in your comments right here. As a reminder, you can uh, comment on each other's writing, but you're not required to. I just want to give you an extra chance to uh, practice your writing skills today. Let's pray, and then we'll look at today's lesson agenda too. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day, and thank you for um, just watching over us, um, providing us with warm um, houses, um, warm roofs to live under while the weather gets cold. Um, thank you for keeping us safe from the virus and safe from injury. We do want to pray um, for healing for any, anyone who might not have those things right now. And we ask that you are helping us as your church to um, provide for the needs for those who maybe don't have, um, just don't have those necessities this winter. We also want to pray that you are keeping all of us and our families safe from the virus and safe from injury, safe from harm as cold weather rolls in. We do, I do want to thank you for um, blessing my family as my wife is pregnant with our third child. And we do pray that you continue to um, watch over my wife's health and keep the baby healthy too. We pray um, that you are um, just already blessing um, May as a, as a time for us to grow our family. We love you, Jesus. Um, we, we pray that you're giving us the energy to do our best today. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Day 37 lesson agenda. So today is pretty much identical to yesterday's lesson, to, or to our last lesson. We're still working on pre-writing for our analysis essays. And I want to start this lesson by reviewing a couple more grammar rules. In our last lesson, I reviewed uh, usage and comma rules. Today, we'll move on to semicolons and colons. And the rest of the period is to finish outlining for your analysis essay. Inside of this video, I'll wrap up my um, outline as well. I should change this. I'm actually going to change this right now. Instead of outline being due the end of Friday, I am going to change that to Monday, just because I know that I'm running a little bit behind on my teaching here too. And then next week is still a drafting week, so um, I would still love to get essays done by the end of next Friday. So it gives you a chance to get your outline done, gives me a chance to comment on outlines. But then if we can get those typed by the end of next week, that gives me a little bit of extra time to grade. That gives you a little bit of extra time to revise. Once again, today's a big day for us to, um, to work on our outlines for our analysis essay. We'll talk about that in a moment. I want to look at a couple of grammar rules first. And here we go, day 37 grammar outline review. I'm working on the video right now, so it's not in here. But let me click view so we can look at our grammar here. Little reminder here as we look at this document, um, I will create a practice test. I actually just need to open it up in Schoology starting on Monday, December 14th. So that'll help prepare you for your final grammar test. It does say your final grammar test will be available in Schoology December 21st and 22nd. I'm actually going to open it up on the 19th now. So you can take it um, over the weekend if you want to finish off our semester a little bit early in writing workshop. Just know that you can take it till the end of the 22nd. That's also the deadline for revising uh, major essays. I know that we're in a kind of a revision period right now too. In our last lesson, we covered basic usage, so spelling, capitalization, and marks and commas, feel free to watch through that video or through old grammar videos in our YouTube playlist if you need help with those concepts. Today, I just want to just give a brief review of semicolons, conjunctive adverbs, and colons. So semicolons, first of all, a semicolon is this little mark right here, the, the uh, dot above a comma right here. Semicolons are mainly used to separate two independent clauses without the use of a fanboy's conjunction. So if I have a sentence that says, I have a teacup, or let's say I have two sentences. I have a teacup pig, period. His name is Will Hammy, period. I could use a semicolon just to bridge those into the same sentence. I should note this only works if your independent clauses are related. So I couldn't say something like, I have a teacup pig, semicolon, pizza's my favorite food. That doesn't work. They have to be related. But since these two are related, I can use a semicolon. This does give the same uh, effect of using a comma fanboy's conjunction. I have a teacup pig, comma, and his name is Little Hammy. There is one other big use of semicolons, and it's to punctuate conjunctive adverb usage. Conjunctive adverbs would be transition words in the middle of sentences, um, so things like however. To punctuate these, you use a semicolon first, 
then the adverb, and then a comma afterwards. Some of you have gotten really good at using conjunctive adverbs this semester. Wow, I wrote this years ago. <laughs> For example, I am only 23 years old. I'm 28 now. I wrote this five years ago, apparently. I'm only 23 years old, semicolon, however, comma. I have a full year of teaching under my belt. It really should say I am only 28 years old, semicolon, however. I have six full years of teaching under my belt. Uh, if you're looking for a list of adverbs, check out this uh, website, chompchomp.com. They do give you a, a nice list of conjunctive adverbs to use there. Um, I will give you a hint. If you ever see a conjunctive adverb question on your final test, it's going to have to do with its punctuation. So I might give you a sentence that uses a conjunctive adverb, but I've messed up the punctuation inside of it. Or I've given correct punctuation, and the answer is no change. So keep an eye out for punctuating conjunctive adverbs. Semicolon, adverb, comma. Related to the semicolon is the colon. And I know this says colons and dashes. Um, I don't think I covered dashes this year. If anything, any dash questions on your um, final grammar test will be extra credit, but we'll see. Um, colons are generally used to introduce quotes or lists. So um, if we notice here, the article states colon and then a quote. It should be noted that colons and commas can be used to introduce quotes. Generally, when I write, I like to balance between the two. If I notice I'm using a lot of colons, I'll mix in some commas. If I notice I'm using a lot of commas, I'll mix in some colons. And the article states, colon, there are three problems. Another colon here used to introduce a list. So three problems, and those problems are poverty, hunger, and war. And I should note right here, too, that for introducing lists, you do not need a comma if you use phrases like such as. There are three problems, comma, such as poverty, hunger, and war. You wouldn't use a comma there. You also don't use commas after verbs. The three problems are poverty, comma, hunger, comma, and war, period. No colon there. So you only use a colon to introduce a list if it automatically follows a noun, like problems or the following, right? Uh, to go camping, you'll need the following. A tent, some firewood, and... Uh, cooler full of food or something like that. Dashes, I might as well teach these because they're here. Um, I know I didn't teach this over the course of the semester, so don't expect to see questions on these on the, on the final grammar test unless they're for extra credit. Dashes are used to denote added information in a sentence. Um, so for example, I shuddered, dash, a tremor running deep into my spine, dash, when I heard the mountain lion screech. The, the root of that sentence is, I shuddered when I heard the mountain lion screech, but a tremor running deep into my spine is just that added information. It's redefining that shudder halfway through that sentence. You can use both colons and dashes to add clarifying information, especially at the end of a sentence. So in this sentence where the colon is, you could use a dash just as easily. Notice that you can use colons for this purpose too. I saw the sweetest sight. What was that sight? A steak and shake milkshake. Man, rip. Steak and shake is going out of business, I think. Uh, I saw the sweetest sight, colon, a steak and shake milkshake. That steak and shake milkshake is clarifying what that sweetest sight is. In our next lesson, we'll look at apostrophes, quotation marks, uh, and then sentence structure. That's actually going to be on Monday. That'll be all we do in our Monday mini lesson right there. That, that lesson will also be time to wrap up your outline for your analysis essay as well. Let's get to our analysis essays. So the other thing that I want to do today is outlining my introduction and my conclusion for my analysis essay. One thing I would point out here is that there are still some of you who haven't selected the text yet for your analysis essay. So if I go back into our course, and if we go, there's a couple places to go. We could go to past work. And then in day 34, so Thanksgiving week, I did ask for you to, um, to clarify what text you want to study for your analysis essay. I see that I've got a couple people who have done entries today, so I'll take a look at, oops, I'll take a look at those in a moment after our video and, and um, give the okay for those texts. Please make sure you complete day 34 journal so I know what you plan to analyze. Another reminder that I would give, if you're having trouble with analysis, we can go to week of November 16th here. In days 32 and 33, I kind of give an overview of the prompt as well as a bunch of example analyses for this essay. You can also easily find all my lesson videos at my YouTube channel. That is Mr. Hantech MLHS. We can go there real quick. And then if you go into playlists, you can find everything in the Writing Workshop Lesson Videos playlist. Towards the bottom are all my analysis examples if you need help.
The other thing I would point out too is that I've already started my outline for my analysis essay. So if you're a little behind on outlining, I would go back into yesterday's lesson folder, day 36. Because in this one, I did do a video grammar outline review where I worked largely through the body paragraph for my uh, essay outline. All right, so let's get back to our lesson folder for today, day 37. I just moved our, our analysis essay outline in here. So if you haven't started typing your outline virtually, you can do that here. I, again, I would love to read through those next week and give some feedback as you actually draft out your analysis essay. Next week will be a drafting week there. But let me click into mine so that we can look to see how I can finish this off. <clears throat> All right, so I'm in my, in my outline right here. Little review of what I've done so far. Um, I'm writing mine, uh, analysis essay about intro three, a rap song by NF. It's the first one on his album, I think it's on Perception. And for my thesis, I'm talking about his use of personification in intro three. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about musicality, the song's dynamics here. I said this, NF structures intro three as an argument with his personified fear. As they argue, the song's dynamics denote, I like that, dynamics denote, how he learns to control his fear. So the theme of the text, theme of the, the, the lyrics of the song, is that, um, is that we can control our fears rather than letting our fears control us. Um, the process, or I should say the personification of fear in this song helps to bring out that theme. The song's dynamics kind of capture that process of him learning to control his fear, learning how to fight his fear. What I did for my body is I decided to split into two body paragraphs. So what I did is I found two pieces of evidence for personification. This one kind of shows how fear is personified, um, kind of captures the argument that they're having. It's mostly that fear is trying to intimidate or pressure NF to give in to his fear. At, that po at this point, fear is telling Nathan that he has to have his fear to be successful. I also captured the end of their argument. This is where NF, where Nathan strikes his fear dead with a shovel right here. Um, I mentioned that, that NF kills his fear. Again, fear is personified, so it's like killing a person, even though it's metaphorically he's defeating his fear here. Notice that I just left myself a little note that I need to explain the lines in italics, where NF says, we did. What, you don't like being afraid? Here he gives fear a taste of his own medicine, right there. As a reminder, you don't need to outline and complete sentences. I just wanted to notice that some of mine are. I like to do my evidence in complete sentences to make it easy to copy paste later. But for my commentary, I know as I'm drafting later, I'll wanna put this in different words. So I left a note to myself. My other two pieces of evidence, cause I, I would wanna split this essay into two body paragraphs. My other two pieces of evidence are for the song's dynamics. And I just did it in halves. The first half of the song, the instrumental intensifies by layering new instruments. So it starts with the piano. They, it gets more intense and loud as it layers in strings and, and choral shouts, choral chanting, until the, about the halfway point, actually, the 245, 230 mark, somewhere in there. That's the moment where Nathan kills his fear. He strikes it with a shovel, and everything changes in the beat. And basically, I have to point out there that that crescendo, that ramping up of volume and intensity, it ramps up the intensity of the argument, too. My other evidence, I talked about the second half. The instrumental gradually softens in volume in the second half. Um, I note that the beat does cut out entirely with that thunk as the shovel hits. There's no beat whatsoever there as NF buries his fear. And then from there, it gradually scales out. The chorus comes back in and then drops out first, then the strings drop out, and all that's left at the end is that original piano riff. That could mean, once again, that Nathan is at peace. The argument is over. He's in control of his fear. What I haven't done yet are my introduction and conclusion. So I like to save these for last just because I feel it's easier to introduce um, essays for essays for which you already have the body paragraph kind of planned out and done because you already know what you're going to say. Conclusions write themselves after you have your body done just because it's all summary. So for our attention getter here, what I like to do is I'll pull a single idea from my thesis and find something interesting to say about it. In my thesis, I talk about arguments. I talk about rap, so and that's a rapper. I could talk about about him or about rap in general. I could talk about arguments. Could talk about fear. Could talk about dynamics, volume. I could talk about control. I'm just debating. Do I want to start off this with a quote rather than using a quote from the song or a quote about fear? Because there are lots of uh, famous quotes about fear. I wonder if NF has any famous quotes about fear. Let me look that up. I like Goodreads quite a bit. I don't want anything super long either. Just looking for something short. That's like an entire rap right there. 
Actually, I'm going to take this second one right here. So um, I'll copy paste this. Oops, control C. I like to use quotes as attention getters. For me, it feels kind of like a cliche to, to use a quote about fear because that famous quote, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Um, but what I am using a quote for is I control, as I paste this in, I'm going to have to paste this as text, I think. Oops. There we go. Um, now, I chose to start off with a quote because I think quotes are, are great for attention getters. I wanted to avoid using a quote directly about fear because there are so many famous quotes about fear. Um, so I decided that would be a little bit of a cliche. So I used a quote not I used a quote to introduce who Nate who NF is, Nathan Feuerstein. And I think I can connect these lines a little bit to this idea of fear or this song, as he says, they say pain is a prison. So um, I wanted to start with something that'll get my reader's attention. The connection that this has to my thesis is in the rapper himself. Um, so I can use my background sentences to kind of explain who he is. And this is a good spot to leave a little note for myself. I don't have to write in complete sentences, so I won't write here. I'm just going to say something like, uh, give background, or I might say explain NF's background, and maybe his rap style and themes. Yeah. So notice, I don't have to write my complete sentences right there, but the idea with my, my introduction is that I'll get my reader's attention with this powerful quote. I'm going to kind of explain who the speaker of this quote is. This quote was, this, uh, this quote, or these lines come from one of uh, Nathan Feuerstein's songs. He's better known as NF, a Christian rapper who largely raps about his own life, something like that. Uh, and then I can kind of transition into talking about intro three. NF structures in, in his song intro three as an argument with his personified fear. And I go on from there. Once again, when I'm writing my full essay, I'll want to flesh out my background sentences. I just don't have to have those fleshed out right now as I outline. I'm also going to copy paste my thesis for now because that'll help me with restating in my conclusion. Conclusion restated. Control V. There we go. Now, for my restated thesis, I can't use the exact same sentences. I have to find a way to state this in a more interesting or uh, state this in a different way right here. I might say something like. I wonder if I can do this in one sentence. The dynamics, NF's dynamics, and use of personification in intro three capture his winning battle with his fear. Notice how that's just a quick one sentence summary of a one sentence re retelling of my thesis right there. And then one to three summary sentences. One is way too short for the sake of this essay, so make sure you're going more than that. Do I have to do those in complete sentences right now? I think I will, just for fun. I will not write my final thought in complete sentences. That's always the hardest part of an essay for me to write. So um, I'm just going to give myself an idea and kind of see what, what comes out um, onto the page when I'm writing my full essay next week. And as dynamics and use of personification in intro three captures winning battle with fear. Um, personification, uh, I'm going to go in order right here. So I'll talk about dynamics. The dynamics of the song rise and drop. Rise, yeah, the dynamics of the song rise. Use crescendo again. Crescendo as the argument, as his argument with fear intensifies. I've used intensify a couple times. His argument with fear worsens. Ooh, boils. Yeah, I like that verb. The dynamics of the song crescendo as his argument with fear boils. Um, and they fall after he kills his fear. After he kills fear. There we go. Personification is used throughout the song to illustrate, no, to, to highlight fear's um, death grip on NF's life. One thing I'm noticing as I do those summary sentences is that I should probably put them in a different order right there. It makes more sense to talk about personification first. So I'll control X to cut, control V to paste right here. I've got my summary sentences. 
And like I said just a moment ago, final thoughts are really hard for me to write. So I'm just going to give myself maybe a strategy to try when I'm when I'm uh, drafting out my full essay later. Sometimes I like to double back to my attention getter. So I started with, welcome to the bottom of hell. They say pain is a prison. Let me out of my cell. I like that. I'm going to double back to, double back to NF's prison in, um, in the attention getter, AG. Perhaps use the final lines of intro three. I thought you had me in prison the whole time, but I'm the one holding the keys. I might be able to actually wrap up my essay with those lines, because that allows me to double back to the prison he talks about in his attention getter. I'm not going to worry too much about, about figuring out how I want to phrase that now, because the final thought needs to be powerful. I'll spend some time on that when I draft my full essay next week. Thanks for bearing with me. I hope that this video is helpful for you as you kind of plan out uh, your outline as well. I will make my, my um, example outline available for you in Schoology 2 so you can compare yours to mine.